engaging celebrity interviews, exciting updates from Christian filmmakers, movie reviews so you can choose your movies wisely, and so much more here on Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Hello and welcome to Faith on Film. We've got a jam-packed show for you today. First of all, I had a chance to interview Catherine Lidstone. Now, Catherine is an award-winning actor and singer. She stars as Mary, the sister of Lazarus in the series The Chosen. But today we're going to talk about a movie that she is starring in called 47 Days with Jesus, which is a Fathom event uh, releasing March 11th, 12th, and 14th. Then after that, uh, you're going to hear from Rick Heil. Now, Rick is a lead singer for the Grammy-nominated Dove Award-winning contemporary Christian band Sonic Flood. Sonic Flood is an American contemporary worship music band from Nashville, Tennessee that has been touted as the fathers of the modern worship. Uh, but first of all, let's take a look at the trailer for 47 Days with Jesus. Hey, hey! Dad, Papa just started telling us this amazing story with people singing and dancing. Oh yeah? Dad, what are you telling them this time? The story of the last 47 days of Jesus' life on earth. You say the meeting is on Saturday? That's the day before Easter. Yeah, so? I gotta spend time with my family. Don't you realize this is for your family? Where's Joseph? Oh, he's on a work call. This late? You're making the same mistakes that I made. It's painful to watch. I have to make a choice for my family. I want my partner back. I want my family to be whole. If you ever feel stuck or lost, God is still at work in our lives. I have faith things will be okay. It's life, Joseph. You might miss it if you don't open your eyes. Catherine, welcome to Faith on Film. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Now, I got to tell you, I saw a pre-screener of this movie um, called uh, 47 Days uh, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's coming out, I believe, in, uh, in March. And I must yep. say, I absolutely loved it. It was oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, it was such a great concept. Uh, not only is it very inspirational, but technically, it's also very educational. And uh, um, I, I really enjoyed watching it. So, but you know what? We just saw the trailer, of course, so that gives us a little bit of a glimpse of kind of what it's about. But can you maybe just enlighten us a little bit more about what really this movie is all about? Yes, it's a beautiful story. I think it's very relatable. It's basically a very disconnected family is going through a very difficult time in the middle of the Easter holiday. And they are um, on this journey to go see their in-laws slash parents. And um, the husband is going through a very stressful time at work. And that's creating a stressful environment at the home. And you kind of get to go on the journey of them being ministered to by the gospel story in this family setting with their children and their sort of mentors in the form of their parental figures. So it's a very beautiful story. And I think it's just obviously a, a great time to be telling it during the Easter holiday. And, and I think it's just really something we can all identify with. Well, I really resonated with it because of the fact that I think I was that guy I, early on. I mean, I'm pretty old now, but as I was, uh, you know, when I first got married and as I started my career and all that, I have to admit that I sometimes placed too much importance in the career uh, as opposed to the family. Of course, in my heart, I was saying, but I'm doing this for the family, just like he did in the movie. Right. I'm doing this Isn't for the family. Crazy? So, yeah. So yeah. Th this this movie really, uh, you know, really uh, ministered to me, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to make up for that with my grandkids now, though. I am available to them as often as they need. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> now, now, tell me about your character then. Julie, what is it? Yes. Uh, Juliana Burden. Yes, Juliana Burdon is the wife Burdon. and mother in this immediate family, nuclear family. And she is just, um, you know, I think she's a, a noble gal. I think she's going through a difficult time and she's trying to find the best way to get through it and to get through to her husband as to what's important to her, how it's affecting the children. And I think what drew me to her is her resolve and resilience and respect. She does all of this in a very respectful manner, seeking the truth, seeking what's right, and trying to guide her husband and her family into a better place. Yeah. Now, I know that they didn't specifically say anything about it, but it felt to me like it was a Hispanic family because, I, if I remember correctly, his mother at one point or really a couple of times spoken Spanish, but it's not necessarily yes. a Hispanic family, right? Is it just my wishful thinking because I'm Hispanic? 
Well, I know she <laughs> obviously does come from uh, her. Her character comes from a Latin background. Okay. I don't know if we ever establish whether or not Emilio's character does. So maybe in that way, it's a little bit more general. But I think it's it's beautiful Maybe. that they have that representation in the film for sure. Well, it just kind of felt good to me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. how, how did uh, how did you get drawn to this movie? I uh, was presented with this audition while I was traveling, actually. And um, I just remember, you know, when you're traveling and you're outside of work and you're booked out, you're like, I'm busy. I what now I have another thing to worry about. Oh, God. Um, but I, I read about it and I was very intrigued at how they were approaching these very common problems. And I, I like a script that's unique. I felt like this one was. Certainly, I love calling it the Jesus musical. So for my audition process until now, I always say it's just my, my favorite musical, Jesus musical song or film that I've ever gotten to work on. And um, it's just because that's how they chose to reveal the gospel storytelling was through Jesus. And so um, through music and through choreography and for me, I think just all of that was very appealing to be a part of a project that was so expansive and so relatable and also just just done in such a way that you really can get on board with any of the characters. You understand all of their plights and you understand their mental space, their heart space. And, and it's something that I think we've all been through. Now, it's not a musical, but I loved how they integrated music into those, the Bible scenes and, and the characters would exactly. be singing. I just yeah. Because I love musicals and I know they don't want to say this is a musical and it's not uh, because the, the other half is not. But I just right. thought that was so cool that, uh, that, that, you know, the disciples were singing and uh, just all the people around Jesus were singing. It was really wonderful. You didn't get Thank to sing, you. though, in it, did you? Not in this film. I, I do not. But there are such such tremendously talented singers and musicians who are all over this film. So I'm very excited for everyone to see it. Yeah. Now, I'm surprised you didn't get to sing because as I was reading about you a little bit, I found out you're also a singer. I am. In fact, it's funny. We had like singathons in between takes uh, with myself and one of our, uh, several of our co-stars who are all very musical. Um, but Lily Passero is one of them. And she was on, I think, American Idol or The Voice this past a couple of seasons ago, if not this past one. Oh, wow. And she got very far. So there was a lot of musical talent, even in the spoken roles, um, which all of us were like, oh, we wish we could have sung in the film. But it's okay. Uh, well, <laughs> you, you have an album coming out, don't you? At least I do. I, I mean... I'm in development right now, and mm -hmm. I have several song ideas that we're fleshing out as to what's going to be the best and make the cut. Um, and I'm working with a few different writing groups for that. So it's been a really beautiful season and hopefully more to share very soon. Well, we certainly would look forward to that now. <laughs> I want to learn a little bit more about you. How, why, when did you uh, decide to get uh, involved in this world, this wonderful world of acting? Ah, yes. Well, um, my mother has a fun story from when I was a toddler that I declared at a very young age I was going to be in the TV. <clears throat> um, I think I was three, and I don't have any memories of that, <laughs> but she assures me that it happened. <laughs> and I think it, it found its way back to me when I was about, I think it was in middle school. I heard of Drama Club, and I was like, what's that? That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I, I had a cousin who was auditioning for uh, community theater and regional theater. And I was like, that sounds fascinating. So I just learned a few standard songs from the songbook and, you know, the sound of mm -hmm. music was one of them. And I, I was overjoyed that when one of my very first auditions, that's what I used to perform with. And uh, I got cast and it was such an interesting role. It was like playing the jitterbug in the Wizard of Oz and then being in the vocal underscore, which was in the orchestra pit. And I was the youngest person by like 15 years. And I was like, <laughs> how did I get put here with all of you grown adults like what's happening so i had just so much fun and i grew up in a very musical family you know we were all playing instruments from a very young age um so that's always really been a core artistic side of me and then acting found its way to me when i was um yeah i guess professionally it happened my last year of college and i i realized mm -hmm. that everything i had been studying up until that point and everything i had been doing just wasn't fulfilling me the way all of my acting days had. And senior year, I was fortunate enough to be able to perform the senior thesis project, which was by David Rabe, Wonder of the World, the play. And that character was so raucous and out there and outrageous. And I just loved doing it. And it was like me coming back home. So yeah. I was very bold in it. It was Her name was Lois, and she was a suicidal alcoholic. And it was a very comedically written play. Um, and we just really got to have fun with it. So I think that was the biggest kind of wake-up hmm. call, like, yeah, realizing 
you know what, maybe this is what I'm made for. And maybe mm-hmm. this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so fortunately, my college had a beautiful program. It was called PTP NYC. And they take out, you know, theater majors and anyone interested who's just a hard worker um, into New York. And we, we got to perform at the Atlantic Stage 2. I was an understudy for one of the parts. And um, yeah, I, that was my sort of crash course into the business. And it was really the theater side of the business. But I think that was great training for what you have to go through on 17 hour days on sets when you're running over time and um, theater, I just will always believe is the greatest acting school you could attend. So, well, I'm, you know, and and I say this all the time on the show, but I really believe that our purposes are kind of already designed or put into us from really from conception. And it's just up to us to feel it and know it and understand it and believe in it and say, you know what, I'm going to pursue it. Um, I think you're right. I think that's correct. <laughs> I, I know, feel like well, it's a beautiful journey of discovering what that is that was placed on I, your heart at such a young age. I'll tell you, I, I have a similar story in that when I was uh, in school, I tried out for a play uh, for uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And I, I actually tried out for one of the dwarves, which is weird because I was already six foot one. So, oh, my God. <laughs> but when they found out that I could play the guitar and sing, this is back in like yeah. sixth grade, they gave me the part of Prince Charming. Oh, how fantastic. <laughs> Pretty good upgrade, I would say. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that, that seems to not have been my calling. Not, not because I didn't do well, but because when, when I was young also, uh, I, went, I wanted to do this, I wanted to act, and we went my, to, a, uh, to an audition in, uh, in Hollywood, and my dad took me in, and back, I still couldn't drive, I was really young. And he just kind of saw what was there. And he said, no, nah, this we, I grew up in the church. He says, no, nah, this yeah. is not for you. And he took me out. And that was the end of that. <laughs> I, I, yes, I can relate. My dad, uh, we had gone through a similar journey. And he was mm-hmm. um, willing to go with it for a while. And then we got to the scene of, you know, auditioning in Boston. And, uh, you know, I was growing up in New England. So he would he would have to drive me like two hours to my auditions. And. I think he just reached a point where I had been signed to an agency down in Atlanta and he was like, no, you're not moving to Atlanta. You're not leaving your household. We're not splitting up the family. No, like this is, <laughs> you're done. And I, wow. I just wow. resented for that. Like, oh, dad, like short changed me as a kid. But I think it is a dangerous uh, industry, if I'm being very honest. And, and I think you have to come here with a very strong head on your shoulders if you're going to be able to be protected while you're in this space. Yeah, but you see, I, yeah. I actually learned that, that my calling ended up being in Christian TV. I ended up being on the, on the well, other side of the cameras. I was a director uh, for you know Christian television. And I guess that was it. It wasn't supposed to yes. be acting, although I still am hoping that one day I may get that chance. <laughs> yeah. yes. So uh, tell me, um, what would you want for people to take away from this movie? I would just say uh, this film is an encouraging one. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that really reaches anyone's heart from what we all go through on a daily basis. It's very modern. It's very relatable. And as you go through the story and see each person's, you know, psychological space, where are they? What are they thinking? What do they think is right? And how do they realize that maybe they're looking at the situation the wrong way? I think the beautiful thing about it is forgiveness and that um, each of us is not perfect and we are always living and learning, always growing. And I think that's the most beautiful thing is that we get to do that in a really fun way in this mm-hmm. film with the inner story. I, like I said, I very much enjoyed it. How can, uh, how can people keep up with you? How can they follow you and know everything that you're doing? Because you seem to be um, doing a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it does feel very busy at the time at this moment, and I'm grateful for that. Um, I am on most of the social media platforms. Uh, mm-hmm. Instagram is at Catherine Lidstone. Uh, Twitter is at Kate Lidstone, C-A-T-E. And um, I have a Facebook page. I have a website. You can sign up for my newsletter and get little blasts of interesting things happening, like mm-hmm. this film, which will be out in theaters on March 11th, 12th, and 14th. And we're encouraging anyone who, if for some reason, it is not playing at your local theater, you are welcome to call and request it. A lot of people's theaters are adding it because that's happening. So it's just an exciting time, and The Chosen's coming out in theaters uh, this month. So we're mm-hmm. just, yeah, we're on the ride. It's very exciting. My character will be making an appearance this Thursday, uh, the 15th, and uh, again on the 29th. So it will be beautiful. Oh, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Well, yeah. thank you so much for taking a little time to be with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a joy. 
Hi, I'm Katherine Litstone. I play Juliana Burdon in 47 Days with Jesus and Mary from Bethany in the Chosen series. And you are watching Faith on Film. There's a cry rising up from the remnant in this land. Growing louder every day. Can you hear us say the unborn child must live? There's a song we will sing. It's the song of victory. Can you hear the sound? The walls are coming down. The unborn child is for me. We will stand. It's now or never today. Love is Can you hear the sound? There's a light breaking through the darkness in this land. Showing us the way. Can you see the day when unborn lives are saved? We will stand. It's now. Welcoming our dear friend who we've known for a long time, and I'm so excited to have on the show today. Rick, welcome. Thanks, Holly. You're the best. We, I tell you, we had we did Cruise with a Cause how many years ago? Whatever, the, a lot of years ago. Oh, when Sonic yeah, that was fantastic. Was that was fun, wasn't it? We did that cruise together, a couple of them, actually. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Rick, you said she's the best. Does that make me second best? <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I, did, I didn't mean to exclude you. You're a blessing. Oh, thank you. Rick, this is you've got something exciting and new mm -hmm. to talk about that's very relevant what's going on politically and culturally right now. So let's talk about this new this song and how you're releasing it and what it's all about and for. Yeah. The song's called Every Heartbeat and we record the song to go along with the heartbeat bill, which has been uh, in circulation for a while, for a couple of years now. The, the footage had been lost for this video, and I finally found it, and I put together a video. And so that was the premiere of 
every heartbeat music video and the kids singing in the background those are my kids and cc's kids and uh they've since grown up and they're at college <laughs> oh my gosh i know and 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 quite accomplished in their own right especially your daughter was singing and oh my gosh she is incredible she's getting her masters in vocal performance at nyu in new york and uh it's it's pretty insane my son he's a triple major, triple minor at Vanderbilt. He's brilliant. And uh, so we just, we're so proud of our kids. And, you know, it's it's sad that people take for granted life, and especially, you know, in the womb. And they want to separate life out of the womb with life in the womb. And we know that God creates all life and all life is sacred. And so right. that's that's what basically the Heartbeat Bill is about, protecting life in the womb. Um, a heartbeat is detected roughly six weeks into a pregnancy, and um, so we were just happy to be a part of getting the message out that God loves life, mm -hmm. and we yes. need to protect it. Hey, does anyone, have you contacted groups, or is any major pro-life group taking this song and, and you know, aware of it? Um, there's a lot of people that are a part of the march. They're excited about it, but it's uh, we've just put it out there for everybody to use, and you know that's so that's that's what really we we're all about. We're about seeing God's message, whatever He puts on our heart, and most of the message is about life and about celebrating Jesus as our Savior and worshiping Him, and so that's really uh, our our. In, the incentive for Sonic Flood, which, by the way, is 25 years old. Um, so we're celebrating our 25th year anniversary this year, and we're gearing up for a tour to roll around in the fall. And if you want to bring us in, not not you personally, Holly, but um, if you want us to come to your house, yeah, that would be great. Uh, huh? You can <laughs> you can send us an email at booking at sonicflood.com. Bring us into your town. We want to be a part of uh, a night of worship with you. Now, this tour that you're doing, are you going to kind of really brand it as a pro-life tour? Um, basically, what we're about and what Sonic Flood has always been about is worship. And so it'll be a night of okay. worship and lifting up the name of the Lord. And and when, when, when we lift up Jesus, he draws all Amen. people to himself and so okay. it's just a really a night of worship and testimony right. uh, about how god has sustained me through dealing with crohn's disease oh. for a very long time since oh. i was 11 years old i've had most of my intestines taken out and we need intestines oh. to live i have three feet of in intestines right now and god is sustaining me to mm. to do his will and Amen. so it's a it's it's a miracle every day, and if you want proof that God is still doing miracles, mm -hmm. here I am. There no you tubes. are. <laughs> yes. No tubes, yes. anything. So, um, nice. you guys, be be on the lookout for Sonic Flood in your area. I, I'm curious, what do the other guys think about getting the band back together? <laughs> I, they're amped. They're amped. Uh, they they really want to be a part of seeing something amazing, and I think mm -hmm. wor worship is is the uh, cure for what ails us as a nation these days it's uh it's sad to see so many people uh living in hate and uh divisiveness and we know that god is love and when we uh as god's people cry out to him humble ourselves repent of our sins and seek his face we know that he will heal our land and uh we need this land healed. We yeah. need the device in this gone. We need uh, to love our brother and our sister yeah. in this nation. You know, I'm, I'm a former worship leader. Well, I shouldn't say former because I worship all the time. But I mean, as a, an actually, yes. worship, actually leading worship at a church, I did that for 10 years. Uh, and you are so correct. I totally understand this. It just is, has a very healing nature when you worship. Yeah. I mean, you know, w whether uh, whether I'm ill or whether I'm just feeling stressed or whatever, all I got to do is just sit and worship a little bit. And you know what? It just it, it the, that worry just lifts away. 
Absolutely. Yes, it's the it's the vibration of the angels, <laughs> and uh, we're participating in something that's going on in heaven twenty four seven, and so Amen. that is that is great privilege, and we're excited to get out there and be a part of seeing God do His wonders in this in this nation, mm-hmm. and celebrating life, and um, you know I think that's it's great that that's part of what you're about, but again, like to say, worship and bringing people together and. You, the Sonic Flood's been doing that. Um, you guys, you know, have, have, and the songs have had longevity and for these many years, and it's so good to see you again and, and to hear that you want to be going into churches and universities and, and having a whole younger generation hear your music. I would love that. So I'm so glad. Where can people get in touch with you again to, if they want to book you for a concert or come to their church or whatever, or their home? <laughs> where, where can hey, you get in touch with you? I- <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I'll be at your house if you have coffee. I'll be there. <laughs> and uh, if they if they want to get in touch with us, it's sonicflood.com. Uh, we have a booking uh, page on our website. Also, if you just want to email us, booking, B-O-O-K-I-N-G, at sonicflood.com. And give us a shout out on all our socials, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or a smoke signal, um, whatever way you communicate, we want to hear from you. And one other thing, I want to acknowledge your beautiful, amazing wife, Cece, who is herself fighting for justice. Just give a little mention of what she does yeah. and, and her daily battles. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my awesome wife, Cece. Uh, she is senior counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, uh, working alongside Jay Seculo and his son Jordan Seculo and right now they are defending the uh, of course the right to vote for the president that we want um, because there's many nefarious people that want to take President Trump off the ballot and uh, and make it illegal to vote for him which is cuckoo insane also, they've been uh, working with the families of the hostages in Israel yes. and trying to get those hostages released. Uh, of course, they do a lot of pro-life work, and, and she's, she's an attorney. They do uh, human rights work all around the world. She's yes. all around the world. She's doing it, and I love her, and she's amazing, and she is the one that keeps me going every day and encourages me that God is, today is the day of miracles and God is a God of wonders and he is our father and he loves us very much. And yeah. so Aww. I love you, Cece. Yeah, I had to mention her. She's a sweetheart, you know. Girlfriend, times. girlfriend from years ago. <laughs> and I want to keep, so thank you for, Rick, thank you. God bless you. We will keep you on our prayers and um, thank you for all you do and CC does. And we just wish many blessings to Sonic Flood and your tour. Thank you so much. We love you. Big heart. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.